So now, Telford break out. Harewood makes the blue line, passes through the right side. Mitchell King shoots about a foot wide to the right. He beeps Smittle, but it was coming wide. So it runs around the boards, and that gives a counter-attack. A backhanded pass, cross eyes from Tolbert. Runs into the corner, and now... Harewood feeds it forward once again. Mitchell King with a tap back to Harewood, but an offside's called because Christie cleared it over the blue line. Mitchell King tried to get it back across on the left side to Harewood. Well, let's just watch if they clear it now. You see, they've given it yeah. away in their own in their, in their own diesel. Christie on the point, up for the one-timer. It wasn't a very clean shot. It was head net bound, but there wasn't the full power that Chamberlain might have been hoping for. But they're definitely holding the puck in the end zone, moving it around the boards, and a penalty's going to come. Ah, uh, this is that's twice Telford gave the puck away in their own zone. And it's interference for taking away, taking out the guy that didn't have the puck. So the Telford Tigers face their first short-handed play. Let me... Nixon sets up. Nobody really attacking on this four checking this other sort of letting no. letting MK set up and come out and MK walk in, shoot, the rebound drops down, there's a lunge for the rebound from Callum Fields. And that was almost a result of and that. And now Harewood drives forward, delayed pass. Silverthorne shoots! Oh inside of the post! I thought it hit the inside of the post and came out. Now is the goal light the, gone the on? I the goal light didn't go on, the no. referee washed it off, that's no goal. Well, the music came on though. That they hit. thought it was. That hit the inside, inside of the left-hand post. post and came out. Yeah, bounced straight out. If, so. if somebody had opened a fire door just after that shot, the draft would have pushed that in. <laughs> yeah. it, was that, it was that close. When we had the cup final game on Wednesday, the pace of it was electric in terms yeah. of the speed and the decision-making that was going on. Weaver passes back. And shot comes in, he takes a tap in from Scott, Scott McKenzie. In front, the shot comes across from the right-hand side. And Scott McKenzie does the business and drops it in the back of the net for the first goal of the night of the Telford Tigers. You saw McKenzie hovering in front of Smithall, just pops it in off the toe of his stick, and we find the first goal of the second period. Took just 39 seconds from number 77, Scott McKenzie, to start the scoring here in Telford. Well, I said at the end of that second, first period, it was a pity you couldn't go on a little bit longer. And that's the result. The pressure was coming from the Tigers. Absolutely, and it's good that that momentum stayed because what you were talking about was worrying whether there'd be a reset. Yep. And actually, they've started exactly as they left off at the end of that book period. And now there's a bit of a battle now. Harewood skates it out, drives forward up the lane, pulls it under the across his body, ties up with Lishran on the boards. I know it was intentional, but the two of them almost knotted up together. Harewood gives him a bit of a push, with a bit of an animosity. And We've meanwhile, goal. there was We've a goal, goal for the Telford Tigers at the far end. It was scored by Silverthorne, I think, as it went down. We were watching Lishram tie up with Harewood pushing and shoving each other on the boards. But as the break went down the ice, it was a goal for the Telford Tigers. And we'll wait for the official announcement who scored it. I thought it was Jason Silverthorne on the back post. Let's see. A classic line from Sky Sports there, there's been a goal. I don't know, Jeff, has the, has the. <laughs> Yeah, it was Silverthorne on the back post, they drive in. We, we were more concerned whether this was going to escalate, yeah, yeah. it was right in front of us. But now, oh, Oliver loses his foot, yeah, as he yeah. turned there, he lost an edge and went straight into the wall. There's a few, that's, that's where people were falling earlier, yeah. right in that area. Shot comes in, Day makes the save, rebound comes in, Chamberlain goes for the top shelf behind him, and Brad Day's laser reactions pick the puck up. That's so he's just resting ahead of the um, games at the moment. All yeah, right. Shot comes in from the point. And that was took out of his hand. Now, there will be a bit of dissatisfaction about that. The shot came in from the point. McKenzie goes across the front. And as I looked at it, McKenzie had a piece of his catch in it. The referee just waved it off and said, no goal. Okay. I thought as much. I think he caught it and McKenzie's stick came across and basically knocked the puck out of Smittle's catch in it. And Schmittel's catching it was up here, crossbars here, yeah. so it's a high stick if it's not a penalty. So it's a face of outside for high sticking. That's why it's not a goal. They battle for the puck now. He uses his right hand to flick the puck away, his left hand to hold Chamberlain against the boards. But this time, Chamberlain goes with the stick lift, and the two of them are battling. Chamberlain he's pushes he's McKinnon get, out yeah, of the way. Chamberlain's and he's going to get a penalty for that, and McKinnon's giving it back. And Chamberlain's frustrated by it because it was a shove away from the play, yeah, he's but inevitably, get he's going to get a two minute minor penalty. And the referee assesses it as a roughing penalty. Yeah. 
point. Rose. Here it is, here it is. Luca winds up, shoots, and oh. Schmittel dives on the puck. There's lots of sticks hovering over there in a hope for a glimpse of the puck, but Schmittel lies back, covering the puck for a stoppage in play. The Raiders and the Bees for that eighth spot. There's, there's been no... Oh, they're playing lead Sheffield are, so okay. close as you're going to get to a local derby. But there's been none of the, oh, we should beat these tonight, none of no, that feeling at absolutely all. absolutely not. Moving the puck round into the slot. Back to five on five, successful penalty kill for the Lightning. And they're driving out, and the penalty's coming, coming, and there's a push and shove there. Uh, was that Jessen? It's going to be on Telford, because it's delayed. Yeah. Yeah. Jessen picks up a minor penalty for... Ruffin, I think. Or boarding. 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 Rose plays the body. And Garner into the wall. That's a bit of a slash and a push on that. That's yeah, coming. Yeah, it's coming. You can have the slash or you can have the cross check or you can have both if you don't like it. Just the cross check. The first one in. <laughs> oh, hang on. Are we going down the line the of false the teeth? False teeth? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll be plugging denture fixing or whatever it is. Abuse, yeah. After abuse. After <laughs> there we go. Breakaway, one on oh. Norris well shoots played. and scores. Well a beautiful breakaway. The defence were hustling back to put a bit of pressure on. They couldn't pull him down from the back because it would evolve into a penalty shot. And no sooner as I said, a 2 0 period, and we face a 2 1 period with just nine seconds. It took an MK to execute that goal. Norris with the breakaway, quick feet. The defenceman tracking back to catch him up, unable to pull him back from behind because that would have resulted in a penalty shot. And Norris executing brilliantly under Brad Day to the right. As he came across and MK put their first goal on the clock at 29 minutes and 54 seconds. At the end of the first period, a 2-1 period, a good period for the Telford Tigers. With Aston picking it up on the blue line through neutral ice. Good Lord. Has anything happened? Not really. <laughs> Had a couple of break attempts. Now a shot from Chamberlain. Oh, finds in. the back of the net over the top right hand corner, over the left shoulder of Brad Day. MK looked dangerous. They drove in on the right side. They passed up to Chamberlain on the high slot just inside the blue line. He picks the spot in the top right hand corner, beats Brad Day, and ties the game 2 2. Just one minute and 40 seconds into period three. And they've picked up, just like Telford did before. Exactly. And MK have picked up where they left off at the end of the second period. So now we're on a clean sheet. I think you can order them from the back of, you know, Women's Own magazine or something like that. Or... Shot comes in oh, from the point, and it was dear, Ben dear, Russell dear, dear. that wound up for the puck. It was shot in from the blue line, and the MK players came across the front of Brad Day, whether there was a tipping involved in that or whether it was just they screened him so he couldn't come see the shot coming in from the point. And suddenly now the Telford Tigers are playing catch-up. Three to the scoreline, instigated shot from Ben Russell on the blue line through traffic. Yep, it's catch up for the Tigers and just shut their eyes for a little bit in the last couple of minutes and conceded two. Yeah, it was Russell, so the guy coming across didn't get a piece of the puck, but probably got in the line of sight of Brad Day. Russell plays the puck, Howells finishes the hit, hits centre ice, three Telford Tigers round him in a triangle, and he still gets and through, he's and his foot was taken out, the stick of Jessen came across the front, as Stewart powered through between the two Telford players, he took his legs out, so he's going to go for a minor penalty for tripping, so ran on to the wall. Now Mitchell King comes in, puts it on the forehand, winds up and shoot, that was blocked by the ankle of Ben Russell, that's going to ache. As he got right in, it was the inside of his ankle on the right foot there. Telford keeping the puck down the end zone now. Harewood through into the slot. There's a battle. Silverthorne on the puck. He's got time. And he puts it in behind him. And, and the goal is As Smithle goes across, the net was dislodged from him four inches. But the puck was already in the back of the net. And that puts the Telford Tigers back on an even keel of a 3 3 game. Silverthorne was given way much time by the MK defence. He got all the time in the world. He picked the spot. He waited for Smithle to commit. He takes it round. He tucks it in behind. Behind him, the defenceman panicked and tried to put the net on its moorings, but by which time Jason Silverthorne had already put the puck in the back of the net. 3-3 three, three the scoreline with a tight game here at the Telford Ising. Green. Cross ice. Jameson plays it forward, passes through on the left side. Norris powers in, backhands it down low. Gets caught up in traffic deep into the corner, just in front of the bench. There's a tussle for the puck now. And the puck's in oh, right, it's a goal! It in. It's another goal on the back post against Brad Day for the MK Lightning. 
And they've took the lead once again with a 4-3 lead now. They're not, oh, they're not giving up on that pressure. 53 That's the thing. minutes and 18 seconds. They got the turnover in front. A lot of pressure on the play. And a goal for the MK Lightning. Yeah, they're keeping us Scored, pressure. I think, by Tolbert. We'll just wait for the official announcement. Some Cowley. Let's go. Let's come out. Jameson. Penalty coming. Be a hooking penalty on think. MK. Am I right? Hooking penalty Am I right? on Cowley. Get me. There you go. Get me. Get me a zebra shirt. With the Tigers have a man advantage, they're a goal down. They need to utilise this to get the game back within their reach. Finley Howells back up to the point. Luca Weaver shot. The rebound drops into the body of Christian no, no, and no, Finley no, Howells no, puts no, it in no, the no, back. No, the players went across the front, they were clear as where the puck was. Smithle was tight on the post, the puck was loose. Finley Howells looks down, thinks there's the puck in an empty net. Merry Christmas. You could have scored that one, Alan. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. Absolutely marvellous. That's know, exactly what had to happen there. You know, whack happen. that with your oak tree straight in the back of the That's net. That's right, mate. My, my, my Titan 2040 or whatever it was called. But that had to happen and they've done it. Yeah. So they've got it back and on level two. In fairness, the defect, everyone was clustering, thinking the puck was there. And the only person that knew the puck wasn't underneath it. And my fear was if the referee thought it was under the player, he could have blown it down while the puck was free and open. I, I looked up there. at the referee, Finley Howells puts it in the back of the net. The referee bought his time. Point to the back of the net, and we've got a 4 4 game on our hands here at Telford Ice Rink. Now, can Scott McKenzie pull this one back? He, he wins the draw indeed. up to the point. Goodison switches sides, shoots it onto the back post, punches it, it the McKenzie, McKenzie, and he puts it in the McKenzie back of the net. 41 seconds remaining, and it was that key play once again instigated by Rick Plant, feeding the puck through to Scott McKenzie, mimicking the goal earlier in the first period. Scott pulling the puck across the net by to the left side, and suddenly game number goal number five for the Telford Tigers put them a goal up. They've been playing catch up for much of the second period, but with 41 seconds remaining, the Telford Tigers pull ahead with the lead. 5-1 the score line. Cowley picks it up, goes behind the net. Plant's right, keeping second. the pressure on. Jameson goes through to the right side. Vladimir Luka and Telford Tigers fans are on their feet, letting off the streamers and celebrating up in the stands. Telford Tigers fans. Congratulate the league champions and talk about leaving it to the last minute, Alan. With getting the final winning goal with just 41 seconds remaining as Telford Tigers fans are on their feet, jumping and celebrating the end of the regular season as league champions with a win against MK Lightning as tonight they will receive their presentation of the trophy together with the Tigers' two teams and they will skate round celebratory here in the Telford Ice Rink tonight. We can now cross to Sean oh, Westlake on the ice. What's your thoughts on that, Tommy? Wasn't the best performance, great result. You know, we uh, kept believing, I guess, and it's hard to get up, perhaps, for tonight. There's a lot of thought about what's going to happen now, probably more so than the game, but we, you know what? We got the job done. I, th I think fitting that we won the game tonight and uh, hopefully allows us to enjoy the evening. And last night as well, great result away in Romford. Last night was a great performance. You know, we uh, didn't have a whole lot to play for, but um, they, they pushed real hard. They had a lot to play for. And, you know, we really showed how good we were last night, I think, the six unanswered goals. And full house as well. Everyone's here to support you. Yeah. Good night. Good night, hockey. See you next year. Yeah, go enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tom Watkins catching up with Sean Westlake as they um, have a chat post-game and the celebrations, the champagne, the winner's cap presentations. And we'll join Sean now, who's talking to the owner of the Telford Tigers Club. So I'm here with the owner, uh, Mike Washburn. Um, what's your thoughts, Mike? Thoughts just now? We've yeah. got exactly what we deserved after all the hard work for the season we just had. And we've still got a couple of playoffs to go. Couldn't be happier. Um, what do you think about a full house tonight as well? Everyone's come out and supported us. Uh, absolutely brilliant. It's nice to see it full to the rafters again. And hopefully this is where we'll be every game next season. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> 
Uh, two, two teams, one club. Two teams, one club. It's always been that. Struggle to go forward with some of it, but both teams this season perform brilliantly. Hopefully start the things things to come next season. Bring it on, because we go again. But first, let's get the playoffs out of the way. So our, over, overall, how proud are you of both teams? Both teams are here tonight. They've come and supported each other. All the fans have come out, all the families and that have come out as well. What do you, what do you think about that? In terms of Telford, I think it is absolutely a fantastic advert for Telford. In terms of the teams, absolutely brilliant. You know, these guys have supported each other up and down. Great coaches, great team. In terms of fans, couldn't get any better fans. Loud and proud. But actually, this doesn't happen without all our, all our, our, our off-ice support, all our volunteers. Thank you to everybody. It's a privilege to be here. And I hope you're loving every minute of it. Right, go and enjoy the celebrations and we'll catch up with you soon. So the Telford Tigers now have been congratulated as a team. Silverthorne picks up the trophy and up it goes in the air. And away would goes the champagne as the celebrations of the players now jump with joy. Spray champagne absolutely everywhere. They hold the trophy aloft above their heads. And the key members of the squad, the coaching staff, joining the Tigers on the ice. Yeah, we think so. Nobody's contradicted this yet, and it's just, just marvellous, marvellous stuff. Uh, it's great that what's happening here in Telford. It's a lot of people's dreams, uh, a lot of people's hard work, a lot of people's commitment. And this was what it's all about. <coughs> Excuse me. A fantastic, fantastic crowd in tonight. Still, you know, in a bit of usual quietness through the second period. Seems to be a thing in Telford. But they're still here in fine voice, seeing their, their teams, their two teams, receive their just rewards.